Hello, in this video we will learn three important things for developing apps and programs in C++. First of all, we will learn how to create a simple graphic user interface. Secondly, we will learn how to use Q custom plot to generate graphs in C++. And finally, we will learn how to connect Eigen Matrix library with Q custom plot such that you can have all the MATLAB functionality in C++. As a result of today's video, we will generate this small app that you can see over here. So I'm having a main window and I have a radio buttons that I can select. If I select a quadratic radio button, if I click on plot, I will generate a quadratic plot. If I click on cubic, I will generate a cubic plot. So what is going inside? Uh, we are basically using Eigen Matrix library to compute the quadratic function. And then we are using Q custom plot to generate graphs. So everything what's being, uh, what will be explained in this video is done using Qt development environment. This is basically a C++ uh, development uh, environment for creating graphic user interfaces and apps. It's a super powerful free environment. And I think if you're learning C++, you should definitely know Qt. So let us start with the development. I'm assuming that you have installed Qt Creator, right? So this is a this is the main window of the Qt Creator. If I click on File New File Project, and if I click on Application Qt Widgets Application, if I click on Choose, I can name my app. I will call it uh, App Function Generation, and I will choose a folder for this app. So I will define a, a folder. And if I follow the step, all the necessary steps, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to use the default steps. Next. Here I will select the compiler. It doesn't matter the compiler that you will select and you click on finish. Okay, so what do we see here? So this is the structure of our program. These are the header files. You only have a single header files that generated and these are the sources. This is the main window class that's inherited from Q main window. I'm not going to go in more into details about Qt. You will not have to modify these defaults uh, over here. I'm just going to add the parts that we need. And this is your main function. So the main function, uh, the main part of the main function is this part where you define the application, you define a window, and you show the window and you execute your application. Now, if we click here, we will compile, build and execute our Code. So this is our main window. This is our app without anything. So this is just a... your next step is to install the Q custom plot widget for Qt. So Q custom plot is a super powerful widget for plotting and data visualization. Uh, its installation is super simple. You just need the source files and you need to copy the source files into the source files of your project. So I did that. So here are, I downloaded from this website the uh, source files, the header and the source file. And I included these files into the main folder of my project. So here they are. Now, the next step is to add, I need to add these files to my project. So I'm going to click on headers and I'm going to click add existing files and I'm going to locate Q custom plot header file over here. 
and now here it is it's added to my project now what is important here to observe if you click on app function generator dot project this is your project file defining everything you need to uh, connect you need to connect different parts so this is for CMake for other steps that I'm not going to compiling steps that I'm not going to uh, explain over here you can see here that the header file is added to your project similarly you need to add the source file so you click add existing files and you click on your source file here you need to wait a little bit here is the Q custom plot CPP that's the source file and you can see over here that your source file is added to your project file now you just need to do one additional step here you need to add print support in order to activate the Q custom widget you need to save this just compile nothing will be changed in your code to see for a second that everything everything is is good fine so you're all set okay so our next step is now to create a graphic user interface so to create a graphics user interface we're going to click on forms and we are going to double click on main window here is basically an editor uh, for placing certain containers widgets on your graphics user interface another way of doing this uh, basically of adding graphical elements you can go to basically your header file and you can locate the constructor of your main window and here in the constructor of main window you can also add certain elements however this is a more difficult more verbose way of adding entries so I will show you an, an alternative way a super easy graphics based method for adding widgets and containers first I'm going to define a window for plotting I'm going to click here on widget and I'm going to drag widget to my window then I'm going to expand my widget so my function will be plotted in this area if I right click on this widget I can select certain options so I can click here promote to now you can promote the two two different classes to different header files so I'm going to promote this to Q custom plot okay so I'm going to promote this to Q custom plot and I'm going to click on add and here it is so now I'm relating this widget to the Q custom plot header file and I'm going to click on promote okay now if we run this code we should see a graphic user interface with axis so here it is now we know that we have related a Q custom plot with our graphic window and we can continue with further step the next step is to add radio buttons so if I double click on my user interface I need to add radio buttons so under the buttons you can drag a radio button here we need two radio buttons and you can change the name actually this is not the name this is basically display text so we're going to uh, type here quadratic and here we're going to type cubic up oh, error I'm going to repeat okay now we have two radio buttons here you can see basically their labels so this is radio button this is radio button 2 we are going to change the label so we do 
right click change object name we are going to call it radio button quadratic okay and this one will be called radio button cubic so this is the basically the object name that you can later on refer in your code refer to in your code okay the next step is to group these two radio buttons in another object so we need to assign to button group so we're going to define a new button group we're going to assign these two objects to new button group and such that we can easily manipulate these two objects and you can uh, change the name of this button group by for example clicking here and you can call it button group let's say radio okay now in our code when we want to refer to these buttons we are going to refer to button group radio or to individual radio buttons which I'll explain in the sequel the next step is to add the, the push button so we're going to add the push button we're going to call plot it this will be the display text we're going to expand it a little bit and we're going to give it a name push button plot okay now we need to add some functionality to this button so what we want is to generate something to generate the plot once you click on your plot button so we need to define a function that will be activated that will be called when you press this button in Qt there are so-called slots uh, that you can and connections you can define them you can write a code for doing that however we are going to uh, do it in a faster way so if you click on plot and you can click go to slot and then you can define certain slot what does slot means well if you click on the button a function will be called right so we're going to select click right you can also click you can also select press so if you press the button something will be generated in your code or some function will be executed we're just going to use clicked and after clicking OK here we are so this function will be called once we click on the button it will be the part of the class main window so you can see here main window and here under the section private slots you can see the prototype or the function declaration right and here you need to implement such a function this will be the main part of our code now you can see over here on push push button clicked right this is the function being called from the main window actually probably from its parent class since this window is, is inherited from the Q main window let us continue with the code development now what we want to know so once I click on plot I need to know in my code if quadratic or cubic radio buttons have been selected and on, on the basis of the selection my code should either plot a cubic or quadratic function so here once this function actually once we click on the button this function will be called will be called and here i need to check if let's say a quadratic or cubic buttons have been selected now to do so i need to set ids to these buttons so i need to assign an id and identification to these buttons so I can check these identification later okay to do so we need to specify in the constructor of our main window we need to specify the IDs of objects 
Now, in order to specify the ID of objects, you need to access them. So how to access objects from here? Well, it's super easy. UI is basically a pointer to your forms, to the graphic user interface. And from here, you can basically select, you can select the object that you want to work with. So in our case, this is button group radio. Since we grouped two radio buttons into a single group and here, I can call the method set ID, which specifies the identification number of the button being assigned to your button group. And I'm going to just type the name of the button. How to access the radio button? Well, I go back to my window. I can see over here that basically radio button quadratic, this is basically the name. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my constructor and to access this object you can follow the same procedure and then you need to specify the ID so we're going to sign one okay we repeat this for the cubic radio button okay here it is and finally I want to set a default button that's being checked. So I want in my graphic user interface, I always want quadratic when let's say I run my code, I want quadratic button to be always checked. So I made an error in my code. Originally it was written radio button cubic, but if I basically execute this code, I will get an error. Okay no member name radio button cubic so I made an error the name of the object is not cubic it's with C it starts with C right and if I execute now it should be fine so here it is okay so let us check let us ensure that the radio button quadratic is always checked we can do so by typing UI radio button quadratic set check true. So now we make sure that quadratic radio button is always set. So let us run the code. And here it is. Great. We click on plot, nothing happens. This is what we want. Now in my function on main push button clicked, I can simply type UI button group radio checked ID. So when I click on my plot button, with this code line, I can check the ID. So I can retrieve, I can identify the button that's being selected or clicked. Right. Now, the next step is to add the Agen library. Right. You need to add Agen library since we're going to perform computations and to do so you need to modify your project file now you need to specify you need to specify over here the path of the installed Agen library here I'm not going to explain how to install the Agen, Agen library you can uh, look into um, one of the videos I made in the past I will provide the link in the description below for the time being, I'm just going to paste the path from my previous project. So here it is. So here I need to include in my project. So if I click on my project here, I need to include the path of your Aiken library source folder, right? Then the next step that you need to do to install the Aiken library, you need to you basically need to include you need to include in your let's say implementation file of your project you need to include the Agen dense header file since you're going to deal with dense computations with dense matrices or dense vectors and I'm going to include the math.h since I'm going to take powers uh, of some matrix 
Next, I'm going to define two eigenvectors that will store the values on the x and y axis, right? So with this code line, I'm defining two dynamic vectors, x values and y values. And then I set the x values as lean space. This is similar to MATLAB notation. I'm uh, having thousand numbers evenly distributed from minus one to one since I'm plotting from minus one to one. And here I'm retrieving the size of my vector of previously defined vectors x values. And then I set the y values to zero. You don't need to follow this step, the last step. However, it's always good to set values to zero of the uh, objects that you're not or elements that you're not using. Okay, so now the next step, we need to define a switch statement. We need to define y values depending on the radio button that's being pressed. If you press, for example, a cubic function, you need to do you need to take the third power of x, x values. If you press the quadratic function, you need to take the second power of x values. So how to do that? Okay, so here is our switch statement. We switch on function type. The function type is the ID of the press button. Case of one, right? It's a quadratic function, case two, is the cubic function. Here remember that we have set the IDs for the quadratic function, the ID is one, and here I made an error, the basically the cubic function should be equal to two, right? So correct this in your code. Now, this is the switch statement. I will briefly go over the statement. Um, there is a video for, uh, on how to use the Eigen library. So what I'm doing here, I'm iterating through um, x values and I'm just taking the square. Here I'm taking the basically the third power of the x values. You see it's super easy to manipulate with these objects. And here I'm using the POW function, which is defined in math.h. And let's execute this code. It's always good to basically execute the code and you will see here that uh, I'm having bunch of bunch of errors. Why I'm getting these errors? I deliberately did that just to explain you one more thing for an experienced C++ programmer. Here you need to define using right namespace again because if you just do include eigendense, the compiler still doesn't know what is vector xd. You can overcome by either including using namespace eigen or in front of every vector you define, you can type like this, right? And if you execute this, everything should be okay. Here it is. If you click on quadratic, we click on cubic, you click on plot. Nothing is generated because we still didn't call the queue custom plot. Let us continue with the code development. In order to use queue custom plot, we need to convert eigen objects into the queue vector objects. Queue vector objects are standard QT containers for vectors. Right, to do so, we first need to convert the eigen objects to the std vector objects, and then we can convert the std vector objects to the q vector form. So we need to perform two conversions. How to convert eigen objects into the std vector forms? Well, we need to call the dot data method on the eigen object. So if we execute something like this. So this line will return us a pointer. It will return a pointer to the memory address that stores the first entry of x values. 
right? And then we can specify, if you type down something like this, we can add to this pointer the total number of entries in the matrix or in the vector, and this will return all the entries stored in R x values right because Egan stores its entries consecutively in memory so if you know the pointer to the first entry and we add to this pointer total number of entries we will select the complete vector and we just define std vector this is just a template standard notation and after these lines two lines of code we have x values std vector that belongs that's basically std vector object now once we have this object we need to convert it to the q vector form and we perform these two lines of code now everything is settled we have q vector objects of x and y values and let us now proceed uh, with definition of our plots first I'm using basically max coefficients and mean coefficients of uh, x and y values to define the axis limits. So I'm calling the method x values. x values, remember, is an Eigen object, Eigen object, and I can call max coefficient to extract the maximum coefficient. Similarly, I can extract the minimum coefficient, and I do that for the um, x and y values. The next step. The next step, we need to give a name to our widget that will be used to plot the graph. So here, or you can even click here, you can click change object name, and you can call it widget, for example, graph, and you click on OK. So here is the name, here is the name, we change the name, right? So we go to our code. And here, with this code line, I can basically get the pointer of the widget graph. And this pointer will be, will be stored in custom plot. So you can just plot the graph by referring to custom plot. Okay. Now, here what I do, I add the graph to custom plot. Then... This code line is used to set the data. I'm setting the data, Q vector data, that are defined over here and here, right? Then give the axis labels, X and Y labels. Very simple. You see how it's simple to how simple to use. And here, this is important. I set the Y axis and X axis ranges using the minimum and maximum values I previously defined. I just set 10%, I give a 10% offset. And here with the Q custom plot, I can call the function replot. And if you execute these lines of code, you should obtain, if there is no error, you should obtain your final code. Here it is. This is what you've seen at the beginning of this slide. Here it is. Here is our quadratic function. Here's our cubic function. And you see. So it takes maybe, if you know how to do all these steps, it takes maybe 10, 15 minutes to generate such a simple graphic user interface that you can expand. And then I will expand it in my future videos. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. If you like this video, uh, please support our channel or subscribe to, subscribe to this channel and have a nice day.